started, I basically met my grandparents when they moved on to our property, and I was about six, and I remember I would go down there like probably four nights a week, and we would watch movies and play games, and one of the games we played was Chicken Foot, and it's amazing, because the older he got, the more times he would, he would be playing, and he would be like, you have to keep drawing in the game if you can't get the right Donimo, and he'd be like... <coughs> Do I have to? I mean, or he would just, you know, forget or something. But, um, man, I have so many memories of the last couple of years. But I remember that uh, he loved, he, or he did not like it if I tapped. Or if I wore a hat, I was a Jew. And if I, I just made motions with my hands or anything, he would be just like... <laughs> but um, my, he's he was a very precious man, and um, he loved to say, "Is six or seven? Is twelve or not twelve?" And I would say, on purpose, I'd say it's not twelve, and he'd be like, "No, no, it's thirteen. And I'd be like, "Well, I know that. I said it's not twelve." <laughs> but um, yeah, uh, he loved Home Alone. I mean, he laughed. He could watch it all day long and just laugh and laugh and. He loved Mission Impossible, and me and my mom both think he loved it because there was a beautiful woman in there named Cinnamon. <laughs> he loved looking at it. And um, one thing I was really glad to hear about was uh, he always said the same prayer in German at dinner, and I, I just felt like, man, he never really prays. Like, he always prays the same thing. And then mom said he was at a prayer meeting and that he prayed a really beautiful prayer, and I was just like, that's awesome. <laughs> but, um, and then just, uh, I don't know, I had have more, but I <laughs> think of it. So, um, he just was really lively and just loved to laugh. And um, I'm just very grateful that he's my grandpa. And, uh, yeah. He's with heaven, with Jesus in heaven and out of pain. I don't really like talking up here, but I just wanted to say that. I don't really think about Opa as a person that I've got to love with. But he was more of a man of action. And I'm really grateful that he came to America then. And I'm really grateful that he was faithful in everything. Because a lot of times people have words, but words don't always don't mean anything if there's an action. In it. And that's what he. He just did the right thing. I don't remember him talking about the right thing all the time, but it was more of just, he was faithful to Oma. And he was obviously faithful in his garden and helping people. And a lady called me just a couple of days ago, telling me that I needed to invite another person who worked at Christian Encounter Ministries to come to the house today. And. She remembers that even though they got the car accident on the way there, they were adamant that they still had to bring the fruits and vegetables. And it was just the, the action. And that's what um, means the most because that makes who we all are today. Dad who he is and Frida and Helen and Norman and, and myself. We don't need somebody to tell us things all the time. But when we watch their lives, because I can't remember sitting on his lap, although there's a picture over there with me on his lap. I don't remember a lot of those affectionate things, but, but it was the, just the life that he lived. And, and I, there's just a couple things that I thought were, that were kind of important to me. And one of them was, I always wanted to learn German, but I 
never could speak it right. Never, never. And I finally just kind of gave up. It just wasn't something that anybody could ever approve of. So I started having to learn sign language in Spanish. And one day he asked me, why, why, are you, why do you learn Spanish? Why don't you learn German? You don't, it's, it's just your family. And I said, well, Opa, I said, who, who would I talk to in German? I have you and Oma, and that's it. And, and I work with people who speak Spanish, and ah, yes, this is true. Yes. <laughs> OK, yeah, that's a good idea that you learn Spanish. And, and then a couple times he's asked me when I was going to get married. And, and I told him, well, I, just not yet. Well, this is okay, you know, I, I was 30-something when I got married, too, and yes, this is okay. It's, it's fine. And, and so, <clears throat> those are just a few moments of talking. Mostly, I think that one thing we get a lot from Opa is stories, because we all obviously like to tell lots of stories. And, and that's what he had, and that's why I wanted to record his stories, because it's real life, and because of God protecting him, and God and him being faithful to God is why we're all here today. Is there another? After Opa broke his neck and we Rob and I went to go and see him. I was just really taken back by here he is in this neck brace. I'm not very good at telling stories, so sorry, you have to bear with me. But he had this neck brace on, and he goes, and someone comes in to, into the, to the room. Rob is gone, and this, the, this nurse has already come into the room, and she's kind of looking at me. And he pretty much introduced me to this nurse. And he says, she. She, she's in the choir. She sings in the choir. So I'm like, okay, I sing in the choir. That's who I am. You know, Rob's, Rob's dad, he always knows me as the flute player. You know, it's okay, I sing in the choir. And so then the speech therapist comes in. And so the speech therapist comes in, and he goes and, produ produ and continues to introduce me. And I just thought, here you are. You're, you're sick, and you're, you're not supposed to be able to swallow and do all these things. But somehow you're introducing me and making me feel comfortable. And I just thought, wow, I'm impressed. And then, and then a lot of times people just automatically think, oh, he's speaking German, and I don't understand German. And I thought, huh, well, I have a hard time getting stuff out, so maybe I'll give him a try. So I listened, and after a while, you know, you kind of get what he's talking about. And then sometimes he'll talk in German, and I'll look at him, and I'll say, I don't understand German. So then he'll say it in English. It's like, oh, that's what you do. And so just over and over again, that's kind of what we would do, is speak German. You're speaking German? OK, we'll speak English. So that's kind of what we try to tell the people. At different visits, we would, we would kind of let the staff know. He knows English, just kind of push him back to English. And we put strong as a bear, you know, when we would go to his hospital places, you know, we would put up there, strong as a bear. And then, so the people would come in, they would say, oh, you're strong as a bear. Oh, he'd smile, he'd be so happy. So I just have really good memories of that, of going to Santa Care with Rob. It's always so fun to go with Rob places. and. Um, and so we would take him, and I'd go, so let's go have him go um, play cards. And so he doesn't want to play cards. Well, let's get him to play cards. So we get him to play cards. Let's put a hat on him. And so we just had lots of fun with him. And um, I just really enjoyed different visits. And, and we got to come over there sometimes, too, just Rob and I. And we would get to relax. And um, I would already have dinner made. Think about this. The Lynn would make dinner and would invite Rob and I to come over and hang out with well, with um, Opa. And Oma would come up. It was a really hard life, but we would do it. So we would come up there, have our meals made, and then o then Oma would go and go to her house. And then then it would be Mission Impossible. So I'd make some popcorn. And we would <laughs> hang out together and lay on the couch, and he'd be in his you know, his nice um, 
chair and we just be all just happy as ever. It was just a really nice, sweet, sweet time that I had with Opa. And so um, I just am so thankful to have the opportunity to be with. I have to go because um, I have to pick up my kids, but I wanted to say real quick. It's so funny. Uh, I took four years of German, <laughs> and the teacher was a, quite a joke. He, um, he didn't teach us German. He would talk to us about football, and uh, he would, because I was a stat keeper, and he'd be like, we need to watch this game. We need to watch this film. And he'd be like, yeah, here's your homework, you know, ja and gut and und die Ecke and all this stuff, and nothing that meant, meant anything really. But so I thought I was like, because he gave me an A, because I needed to have an A to continue to be on the um, football team stat, um, status. So when I married Ben, I was like, oh, I know German. He's like, yeah, my grandpa's going to love you. All right, cool. So... Um, <laughs> So I'd go up to Opa when I when I didn't know him very well, and I'd be like, "Yeah, uh, good morning, Opa," or "Grand," or, or um, what was it, Grand Grandfather, Father? Yeah. Grossfather. Grossfather. Yeah, right. G R O S. Yeah. So I'm, I'm like, um, I'd be like, "Good talk, Grossfather," or Opa, <laughs> and he'd be like, "Ah, uh, yeah." <laughs> <laughs> so I'd be all discouraged and um but then I I don't I don't know German. <laughs> so anyway, uh, that's why I could never understand him and it's funny that he gets all because I here I am, I thought I knew German and all I could say is ja bitte and some other bad words and uh, it was shameful, so <laughs> Is there anyone else? Yeah. <laughs> um, Dan and I also had um, the privilege of being able to spend time with Opa. Um, and we just really enjoyed those times because we got to know him a little more. And um, I just really looked forward to hearing his stories. And um, because he did have a lot of stories and a lot of good things to say, and it was just really neat to hear because um, of his culture and just um, where he came from. Um, that was always really interesting to me, and I was always learning something different um, about him. But there was one day um, when we came over, and I learned that Opa really liked chocolate. <laughs> and um, that was really encouraging to me because I really love chocolate, too. <laughs> And um, there was one day, he had just all this chocolate, and he had these M&Ms, and he's eating the M&Ms, and I'm going, oh, I like M&Ms too. Like, I wonder if he'll give me any, you know, and I'm just watching him eat. And then they, he has this hazelnut um, chocolate, and it's really big. And what I gathered is he hasn't eaten that before. <laughs> so he's sitting there, and he gets to that. And it was, he tried, he gets to put it in his mouth. And um, he just goes, and like backs up and then he tries again and he just backs up and um, we're just laughing and he's smiling and he's laughing and we're just like eat the chocolate Opa it won't kill you just eat it it's, it'll be really good and finally he ate it and I think he really liked it and um, I just have a fond memory of him just smiling and enjoying his chocolate and um, I'm just really gonna miss him and miss seeing him in the choir room and it's just really encouraging to see him and Oma there and we continue to just see them around and Oma got to come Monday night with us to church and it's just they're just rolling along you know and 90 years old and it's just so encouraging and um, Dylan and Wolfgang you've been encouraging just to watch how you guys are just faithfully taking care of Oma and Opa and um, you really blessed me in that. I was trying to think of something that uh, I would have to say about Opa, um, but really I was drawing blanks just because um, any interactions I've had with him have kind of just been more humorous and just funny little uh, moments. Um, but then I found this verse, and just from hearing everyone else's um, testimonies just about his life, this verse kind of sums it all up. Deuteronomy 6, 
5 through 9 says this, You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, and with all your soul, and with all your might. These words which I am commanding you today shall be on your heart. You shall teach them diligently to your sons, and shall talk of them when you sit in your house, mm -hmm. and when you walk by the way, and when you lie down, and when you rise up. You shall bind them as a sign on your hand, and they shall be as frontals on your forehead. You shall write them on the doorposts of your house and on your gates. And just when I think of that, just combining it with everyone else, what I've been hearing, um, even what Alicia is saying, um, just seeing his faith and his actions, and just what we're reminded about, um, you know, we're told to be like Christ. And what I see from that too is when we do that, just the godly um, lineage we raise up, to our children, you know, they're going to take on even our bad habits, but. And when we get things right and just seeing, um, you see it go down in the generations from Wolfgang to Zach, John, uh, Ben and John, um, and yeah, even, uh, Alicia and Patrice and Lexi, just all of them, um, they have their own separate faith and uh, they, you know, they don't do these things just to get the approval from their fathers, but just to see that uh, all, a lot of that has come just from seeing how they're the kind of um, example their father has given them and just seeing their whole faith walked out. Um, it's encouraging to me and I guess my connection that I would say to, that I have with Ova is because of what he chose to do, the, the footsteps he's put in his life, it's affected my life just through this whole generation. So I'm thankful for that. Amen. <laughs> The second of the seven I am sayings uh, in the book of John is, I am the light of the world. And as we were about to sing this hymn, Madeline pointed over there to me in the third verse, and she said, fair is the sunshine. And I was thinking, yeah, the uh, cooperation of man, the farmer, the gardener, with the sunlight, we, we know how important that is for the garden. But she pointed, fairer still the moonlight. She says, that means coming to the end of your life. Well, I've never interpreted that verse that way before, but now, because I was here at Bernhard's funeral singing this song, Chosen, sitting next to Madeline, I won't ever forget this. And this is the power of music connected to the church. So I thought that might be fitting for us to close today by singing this uh, hymn one more time. I didn't have any special attachment to this hymn at all until I came to Auburn and met Bernhard. Bernhard is the one who said, this hymn is important because it's connected, not so much the words, he didn't tell me anything about the words, but it's because of that uh, folk song from the old country. But I think the words really fit his life. I'm glad that uh, when they were doing their tests and decided he would be a gardener, I think that's one of the ways that God spared him. Maybe if he had been stuck with the intelligentsia of Germany, the whole life would have gone differently. Maybe we wouldn't have um, the trip to America and uh, this next generation gone. So John, would you come back? And, uh, and I'm just going to ask uh, Shannon and um, Lexi, would you come and sing along with them? And we'll sing the song. And we're not going to ask you to stand. What I'd like you to do in closing is just look at these words and sing these words. Um, I'll close in prayer and we'll sing this song. <laughs> Father, thank you so much for our time together. And uh, Lord, we, we haven't rushed on this uh, commemoration of Bernhard's life. And Lord, we thank you so much that uh, 10 years ago, Alicia had the camera out and valued this legacy. <laughs> because we got to hear the stories maybe with a little more clarity and uh, even to be able to put some confidence in the authenticity of the stories and the reliability to be able to pass these stories on down. We thank you that it's not just blood uh, that connects family together, but in the church, it's the blood of Christ that has uh, brought us together to accept one another. We thank you for this this uh, contemporary Abraham that we've gotten to know personally. And we can see the importance of uh, Abraham uh, living his life out in front of Isaac 
and passing it on down to Jacob and uh, to all the rest. Lord, we pray that you'll do it again in, in this family line and in, in our church, in this generation. Um, you are the Lord of all the nations, and we thank you that maybe somebody in Germany, uh, the life will be different because they connected with Bernhard Felix Rosenau. For it is in your name we have gathered. In your name we pray. Amen. <laughs>